Hi, this is Dark Fox One Two Seven, and welcome to another Scrim Creation Kit tutorial video. Today, I'm going to be covering lighting. Now, I have done this tutorial before in two parts or three, I think, and I've also done one on one or two common issues. Uh, but I'm just going to be redoing this because of all the trouble that I've had myself, and just see if I can get some hint tips and tricks across, and just cover lighting for those new to it uh, in the Creation Kit. So, we're going to start with the basics, and we're going to go under World Objects and Light. And if we just expand that, you've got different types of lights that you can sort of select. Uh, empty the filter there. Uh, but I usually just search in general under lights. So you've got four different types of lights, and I'm just going to go through what they are. If we go and edit one, you've got omnidirectional, which will cover the whole sort of uh, room entirely. It will go in every direction. And then you've got a shadow version of it, which will cast shadows. The normal version won't. And then you've got two other types. You've got Hemisphere and Spotlight. Now those two are also shadow types. There's not non-shadow versions of them, although I would like there to be. Uh, there isn't. The Hemisphere is sort of a half of an omnidirectional, so we'll see that in a moment. And the Shadow Spotlight is where it focuses on a specific area, as a spotlight does. So we're going to start with omnidirectional. I'm going to drag and drop that in. Now, if you can't see this little sort of light symbol here, and this little light bulb that should appear, then you might want to tap M, which shows and hides markers, which include your light markers. And if you can't actually see your lights projecting at all, then that's because of this up here, this little bulb being on. If you turn it off, you can see the lights. If you turn that on, it means that all the lights are turned off and it just keeps it as a, at a standard level that you can see everything and see what you're doing. So if you tap A, that's sort of your hotkey for that. And if you tap L, that will show you the radius that the light is expanding. And if you want to change the radius here, you can hold down the S button while holding down your primary click which is usually left click for most people out there and then you just move your mouse and you can change the radius of the light. You can also change the brightness of it either by going under the lights tab when you double click on the light itself you can see uh, field of vision there or field of view you can see fade there which is sort of the brightness if you put that to 5 it's really going to be quite bright and going to blind you so I don't usually put anything past 3 and then you've got something called the shadow depth bias. Uh, this usually determines whether you end up with that striping issue. Uh, if ever you have sort of striping from lighting, which is quite common in the vanilla game, it's probably because of that. So you've got cast shadows, doesn't light landscape, never fades, doesn't light water, different things that you can play around with. There's further details on the creation kit wiki on every sort of option, and I'll leave a link in the description for that. But uh, that's our general lighting options there. So we just move our light around as you can see and change our radius like I said. We're just going to tap L off. Now you should be familiar with the controls of the uh, kit already so when I start doing specific things then you'll have to just research that if you don't know how I'm doing it. I'm just going to stick to main lighting things here. Now that's just the norm normal omnidirectional. If we drag the shadow version in and we brighten the room up here you'll see that it will cast shadows. Now it's actually quite bright in here so I'm just going to change the lighting template from being non to default. Now, I'll go more into lighting templates in a moment but that basically determines the sort of default lighting being projected in the entire room. Sort of like an illusion. So if we just brighten this up here you'll see that it actually starts to cast shadows which the normal omnidirectional one doesn't. So if we just change it back, Control and F you'll see that it completely ignores ob objects, goes straight through them and the shadow one doesn't. Now I've got two of the types of lights and uh, we'll search for a spotlight oh, mistype there just go for a farm spotlight there and again, well, won't change there some of these are really quite picky about the, the radius, that's quite small, let's just get a default torch on, try that one there we go, we can expand that one a bit more. Those focus on a, a more specific section, as you can see, and um, we've got the sort of half version, the hemisphere light, 
which sort of cuts the radius in half if you tap L you can see it only goes uh, on this lower section here even though it does shine slightly upward there which is weird but you can see that uh, majority wise that shouldn't go any higher than uh, where it's projecting there now the reason that you might want to take into consideration the radius that your lights are shining at is one so it looks realistic and doesn't brighten up too much the room and two because lights do eventually collide into each other and if you have too many crossing over with their radiuses you'll get a flickering effect or an effect where items just go pitch black in the room now, I'm not going to demonstrate that and uh, many of you might already have seen that and wondered why that's happening it's because you've got too many lights in one room so talking about the amount of lights you can have, there's not really any limit to normal non-shadow lights, but there is a limit to the amount of shadow lights that you can have. Oh, mistyping here. So if we just grab my orange flicker shadow light, you can have up to four shadow lights in a room before one of them will go red. So if you get four there and a fifth, and one will always go red, uh, meaning that you've got too many lights and they'll start flickering as well that's the kind of thing that you'll get if there's too many lights I usually stick to about two in a cell if you've got a really powerful machine you never ever really notice lag even with heavy areas then just take into consideration that just because your machine is sort of running well uh, with the amount of lights that you have other machines might suffer so just keep that in mind now uh, common lights that I sort of use are the orange flicker lights they're really good for sort of uh, candles in general as you can see when it was dragged in it's uh, quite a nice overall colour for my fireplace over there I'm just going to type in fire and I usually use the Markarth fire which is quite a good one or I'll use the solitude fire over there and you can obviously get uh, different shadow versions have a different shade of orange to them. Now you can create your own lights so if we go new you can start from scratch and you can create your very own light, give it an ID. Uh, model is usually if you're dealing something with a torch if you want it to be an object that is emitting light so the object literally is a light itself. Select sound, you can have a sound coming from it. You'd obviously want to select a loop sound otherwise you'd enter the cell and then it would play once and then you wouldn't hear it again. Uh, so it'd be sort of like a looping sound there as you can select loop sounds are usually sort of have a LPSD I'm not going to go into sounds too much uh, add destruction data it doesn't usually apply for lights much but it does appear on quite a lot of objects now you've got your, your other options that I've sort of mostly explained you can change all these uh, go to the creation kit wiki again if you want more detail on every single option but you've got the fade which is usually set to about three is quite reasonable uh, the colour you can select yourself, go ahead and select a custom colour, usually I um, pick most lights in the game but if you do want something more specific you can go ahead and do that. You can have the lights flicker or pulse if you want, uh, sometimes the pulse doesn't work when you create your own light from scratch and you usually have to just edit an already existing pulse light, it's just another wonderful thing with the creation kit where things don't want to work for some reason. Obstacle is to do with if they were going to be a sort of torch rolling along the ground. It also, obstacle both in lighting and other objects usually means that it cuts out a bit of nav mesh so that NPCs aren't trying to walk through it. Random animation start, most of this doesn't really apply. A portal strict is to do with shadow lights only when you are creating portal rooms for optimization, uh, that it will only bounce uh, shadows. Uh, impact objects and make shadows, it'll only do that for the objects within the portal that the light is sort of emitting inside so it wouldn't uh, spread out to other rooms outside of the one that you're in. Uh, this light can be carried, this is what you would use for a torch so if you were to go under torch in the filter here under lights and you looked at a default torch uh, that's probably the <laughs> wrong one to select but there is one in here it's just the standard torch object there we go uh, as you can see there it actually puts a name to it and it's got its own mesh and that means that it can move basically uh, can be moved around taken along with the player so you've got a number of different uh, options you can even attach a script to your light if you want to do different things with it so like I said check the wiki out if you want extreme detail on uh, those sorts of things 
So that's uh, general just lights themselves, uh, a few tips there. What next? Uh, just a few things to remember here. Oh, I suppose I can go into templates. I'm just going to mention the sort of issues that you can commonly run into. Sometimes when you place a shadow light down, if we can go and find one here, you place a shadow light down and sometimes you will see that it's not working. Uh, you won't have changed anything in the options menu and for some reason you'll come in and the light is red and when you try and change it nothing is happening whatsoever and you cannot see any light uh, that is because of the setting that I just changed but for some reason on the rare occasion whether it's that you might knock a hotkey that does this or whatever uh, shadows get turned off in the shaders tab under the preferences so just tick that on I did do a separate video on that but I thought I'd just mention it for this sort of lighting tutorial and as you can see we can see our lights again that's a real pain I think I mentioned the uh, shadow bias and the amount of lights that will cause flickering so that's just the, the common sort of issues that you come across with lights so if you ever do have any sort of flickering issues any trouble like that it's usually because you've just got too many lights you want to have you can usually get a good amount of lights in one small area and then when you're dealing with large areas and lights are covering large sections of that room you usually cut down to a lot uh, less so when you can't use all of the lights that you want to use and you've got a lot of dark corners in the mod you can use lighting templates so I'm just going to go ahead now and I'm just going to add a few lights in here just to show that off so go with orange as you can see after we've placed our lights in here we've still got a lot of dark corners in the mod a good example being just there there's a bit of a dark corner there we might want that brightening up so you can use lighting templates and not only do lighting templates let you light up specific areas a little bit when there isn't a light being emitted there but they also help you give a, a different kind of feel to the room so you can have it quite warm if you're using like an orangey kind of template so by default it's set to none like it was at the start of the tutorial that is dreadful you probably don't want that and you, see, you can select other kind of lighting templates that give a sort of certain sort of tint as you can see that the walls the corners some spaces are just lit up a little bit more but it doesn't ruin the general feel to the lighting that you've placed yourself I usually use just the default template and then let my own lights do all the work but you might not want to you've also got options here to change the lighting template but it won't change the base if you want to change the lighting template or even create your own you can go into world data and lighting template there right click new and you can go through you can change all the colors for different things the ambience the fog the directional so color the fog stuff like that uh, which is quite a lot of detail or you can just select a current template and you can even change that around a little so you can change a few colors if you turn certain options off there's something stopping us from changing this one which is certain options here as you tick the options it's it's pulling it off the template if you untick it that means that you're using everything else that is ticked uh, off the template and then just adjusting the bits that you ask for show sky is really useful although it's not directly linked to the uh, the lighting here let's just go to a sort of region apply that you can see the sky that's also helpful if you've got an interior cell and maybe you want to be looking up through a, a ceiling crack and you want to actually see the sky of the place that you're in that's just a little extra sort of tip there so you can change certain things if you untick them and just adjust those but it won't change the base item of that lighting uh, template so it's not changing that anywhere else that it is in the world uh, that's pretty much it you've got directional ambient lighting I don't tend to mess with that uh, but that's that so uh, what else there's a one other nice thing that you can do if we go and find a window something really useful here so something not really linked to lights that you place down there's a one here that I do like that's the one just drag this window here 
One thing that a lot of people miss when they are making their mods and they've got interior cells is light coming from windows. Now if you look at a lot of sort of uh, places in the world they've actually got standard lights that you can place in front of the windows and I think it's called a uh, window fill in lighting and the problem with this, this is meant to be emitting the light that would be coming from the sun and shining out of the window now the problem with this, I'm just going to set the template back to default because this is way way too bright if it works <laughs> might have messed up there default light and template, that's it, ambience that's it now the problem with this is at the moment when it's about three in the morning and the sun's gone out you've still got this light coming through the window which will be coming from the sun and technically there shouldn't be any light coming through the window much at all during the night or there should be a lot less so you want to link that to the region uh, the general Skyrim timing and the way that you do that go on your light you'll see why I've put the window in in the moment because you can do the same thing and you've got emittance and you can select uh, interior emittance that usually uh, doesn't apply for this but exterior light if you type in FX and go into region you can see here there's different sort of things that you can set to and if you click sunlight and OK you can't see any change at the moment but this should match the sunlight so if you change the time something's obviously not quite set right here let me have a look at this sometimes it's invert day and night invert day and night will mean that you can have candles on during the night and then they're off during the day because you will not want candles uh, showing the way down a path during the day because there's no need for them and then if you set this sort of region sunlight or region sunlight white uh, under emittance what that will do is during the night you'll get a lot less light emitting from this light source and if you change it on the window you do exactly the same to the window the colour of the window as you can see will also change so I'm just going to set that to the same here it's going to be sunlight okay now as you can see it's gone from being orange like that one at about 8 to being its nice white colour I'm just going to click F5 sometimes it doesn't update uh, but you'll see that effect in game and the light will do exactly the same thing that's most of the problems that you're going to come across the way that you put lights down, the way you change lights all sorts so I hope that you found this tutorial useful uh, that pretty much wraps it up I think that's a little more detail than my old ones so please check out my main website my anti-social websites hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already and thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time